Hi, everyone. This is Two Broads Talking Politics Live, and I am on with returning guest Molly Jong Fast, who is a writer and an editor at The Daily Beast and the co host of the new Abnormal podcast. Hi, Molly. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, so uh, Molly and I are both juggling, you know, being moms and school going on in our houses <laughs> and election stress and. <laughs> everything else i'm in a makeshift studio in my hallway because there's you know class going on in multiple other rooms <laughs> so molly it's election day how are you feeling you know it's really stressful i think like we're all so freaked out from last time that it's yeah. hard not to be i mean it's hard not to just fall into that again. So this morning I, you know, I know it's gonna be a late night and I'm gonna have to write and like do a lot of, you know, podcasty stuff, etc. So I I slept late till seven and then I got on the exercise bike and then I had a chronaut and then I <laughs> stared at the television and felt like I was gonna throw up for three hours. So I mean, you know, we don't know anything. We don't have any, you know, we have some early votes, which are huge, but does that mean they're hugely Democrat, they're hugely Republican? You know, we can see a little bit, but not really. And then we don't know. I mean, there are good things that we know, which is there hasn't been violence, which is not nothing, you know, and polls are moving pretty, pretty smoothly. There isn't like massive you know, outages in different places. So all of that is huge and really good. Like that is really, really good. So, but you know, we're not really gonna start knowing stuff until seven and then eight and nine and who knows, you know, I mean, who knows? So it's stressful. Yeah, definitely. I, our mornings sound similar. I also had to get on the exercise bike this morning. I was like, I'm a ball of stress. Yeah. <laughs> stress needs to go somewhere. So how did you vote? You voted by I, mail? I voted early. No, New York has never, ever, ever had early voting, ever. And uh, this was our first time ever. So it was exciting, but yeah. it was not without its hiccups. It, AOC actually talked about it. Um, there was this, you know, lines and lines and lines and back up but when we went uh it was a couple days into early voting it was that sunday and the, so it had been going on for a week mm -hmm. and we went in at eight o'clock in the morning and then we went out it was easy so but you know early voting is really exciting and has really <laughs> changed the way americans look at democracy because voting was very you know voting was if you can get off work on tuesday you can vote and now all of a sudden voting is Saturday or Sunday or Friday or Monday. And that is very good for democracy. So there are a lot of very cool things happening. Um, but yeah, no, it's very stressful. I mean, this is not like a normal election. It's not like if Democrats lose, we get mid, you know, <laughs> like if Democrats lose, we get like, you know, more ice raids yeah. and, you know, uh, you know, no vaccine until whenever Trump feels like it and he fires Fauci and he tries to get everyone to get herd immunity. I mean, there's a lot on the table today. There's a lot on the table. Most signs seem to be promising, but it feels like every time I show any hope, people are sort of pushing back. Like we can't have hope. Hope is dangerous. Have you felt that too? Um, yeah, I wrote a piece for Vogue this weekend about that people are very superstitious about this election mm -hmm. and that there's a feeling that, you know, maybe we're not going to, you know, it will keep people from voting or it'll do this or it'll do that. I would say I think some of it is that it's just such an important election that people are scared. I think some of it is that four years ago, we did not know how, like, if you would ask me that if there would be people who would vote for this reality television host who called all Mexicans rapists, I would be like, no, that would never happen. Like, you know, and, and people did, and a lot of people. And what is the worst thing about Trumpism and about all of this is that the more people who vote against Trump, the more it's a 
it, you know, we're rejecting Trumpism, we're rejecting racism and sexism mm -hmm. and all the other kind of divisive stuff. So the more he loses by, the better it is for American society, right? It means that people care about those things. You know, a vote for Trump is, you're not, you know, a vote for Trump is a vote for like lower taxes and I don't care what happens to the other guy. And yeah. that is not, um, you know, that is not a great look for America. And so there is a lot hanging in the balance here. And it is not just about Trumpism. It's about like, who are we as a country? Are we a country that wants to be better or are we a country that wants to be shitty? And in 2016, we were a country that just wanted to be shitty. So it is, you know, it's very hard. I think there's a lot going on. So you uh, you have certainly joined forces uh, with some never Trumpers. You host the New Abnormal with Rick Wilson. You know what what do you think is going to happen to these sort of coalitions that we've built over the past four years if Biden wins tomorrow? You know what does that look like? That uh, that getting along look like moving forward? Well, wins I mean, today, that's, tomorrow, whenever. <laughs> that's a good question because uh, the never Trumpers are not liberals. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anyone is under any illusion that they are. So what does that mean? I would love it. You know, we have right now a coalition that includes like Bill Crystal and Noam Chomsky. Those people are not in the same party, right? Mm -hmm. Bill Crystal and Noam Chomsky do not want the same things. And so I would say you likely going to have a what? I mean, look, if Biden gets elected, that we are going to, you know, if Biden gets elected, and it's also going to happen in, in the Republican Party, too, there's going to be a schism, you know, there's going to be the Don Juniors and the QAnon people, and then there's going to be the Ben Sasses and, you know, the people who are like, there's good Republicans. So yeah. I, I would say, I think that, um, yeah, there's certainly going to be a schism. And I personally think that Democrats need to push Joe Biden as far to the left as they possibly can, and that we need to prevent Joe Biden from being uh, Obama-ish in his want to placate Republicans. Yeah. But that, go, come, that starts tomorrow. If he gets <laughs> Today, yeah. we love Never Trumpers. <laughs> we want everyone to get along. Welcome. We're a big tent. Tomorrow, yeah. we can worry about the other stuff. But you know, yeah, I mean, and and by the way, all the people who did not hold Trump responsible for anything are going to be enraged if Biden tries to even push a liberal, I mean, to push any kind of liberal, you know, yeah. New Deal kind of thing. So, yeah, I think it's going to be the fucking fight of our lives. But of course it is. And look, the Republican Party, the reason we got Trump was because they see the writing on the wall. They know that demographically it's over for them, right? Texas, I mean, Texas turns blue, there is no more Republican party. So I think that this is a very exciting, but also very intense time in American politics. And that's not gonna change just because if uh, Trump gets defeated. So, sorry, there's lots of other noises going on in my house. <laughs> If uh, I, other than the top of the ticket, other than the presidential race, what else are you watching tonight? I know you've interviewed some other candidates. You know, what what are you really interested to see? So, you know, there have only ever been 10 African-American senators. That is fucking ridiculous. So there are three African-American male senator, uh, male Democrats on the t There are actually four, but on the ticket, there are three Democrats. Um Mike Espy from Mississippi, who is like one of my favorite interviews yeah. ever and who's just amazing. Uh, Reverend Warnock from in the Georgia special could happen. And um, also Jamie Harrison. So, you know, look, if those three get elected, I've had a really good night. Um, we'll see. You know, there's other people, too. I mean, in Louisiana, there's amazing um guy who's very young who's the uh who's the mayor of uh shreveport who's mm -hmm. running in this very big open primary against bill casey that could i mean we are there are a number of uh runoffs that can happen in november and december a number like you know 
there's a bunch. So I, I could see a lot of those, those two Georgia, Mississippi could go to Mississippi probably won't go to a runoff, but um, Louisiana definitely will. Mm -hmm. And so there's this season is not over in, you know, tomorrow. Um, so I'd like to see that. I would love to see Martha McSally lose again in two <laughs> years. That would be just delicious. Um, yeah. Susan Collins, the fakest moderate in the world. Uh, she, I would love to see her go. Um, everybody in the world wants to see Lindsey Graham defeated. I mean, I don't <laughs> think even Lindsey Graham wants to. So that would be a great one. There are a lot of really shitty Republican Senate candidates. And I actually think that some of it is that their bench is not great. Like, you know, the people they thought would be their kind of future, their superstars, mm -hmm. they're really, they've sort of ruined themselves with Trumpism. Like, you know, if you look at someone like, you know, any of the kind of center, you know, Joni Ernst, right? She went on the Trump train. McSally went on the Trump train. Mm -hmm. um, uh, who's the other one who was the UN ambassador? Nikki Haley. Oh, Nikki yeah. Haley. I mean, she ruined herself with Trumpism. And, like, had she just kept her powder clean, she could have been like, I never wanted any of this. And now <laughs> I will take over the book. But, you know, they couldn't do it. So they all yeah. became Trumpists. I mean, even a Ben Sass, who you know hates Trump, really became a Trumpist and Marco ruined himself and Ted Cruz. I mean, so I don't know, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have this Republican party if Trump loses, that is like completely at odds, right? The Trumpists mm -hmm. versus whatever's left in, nor you know, the normal Republicans. Uh, so it's going to be great to watch them be miserable. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. And uh, I'm just thinking about 2022 also, yeah. how many, terrible Senate Republicans I'm ready to oust in 2022. So yeah, yeah. we're definitely not done after today. <laughs> it's just getting started. Yeah. So you the other day uh, celebrated, I think it was 23 years sober. That's pretty yeah. exciting. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, so how did you get through the Trump years? <laughs> and what is your advice uh, for people who are maybe relying on substances a little bit too much to get through um, this time? Well, you know, it's not, it's always good to be, I mean, I got sober as a teenager and it was um, a really great thing that happened to me. And I'm really glad that I got the chance. Um, but you know, it's, it's tough and you're really, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard, uh, it's a hard line to walk. And I feel mm -hmm. for people really a lot. And I think, and I think this has been a really stressful time. I think we're all really stressed. So it does make sense. That people yeah. Elizabeth out. Warren the other day said people should put some extra cream in their tea. <laughs> Just cream, though, guys. Just cream. <laughs> um, yeah, but so, well, I mean, it, yeah, it's it's really tough. I feel for people a lot. I think it's very hard. Yeah. Although, hopefully, hopefully, starting tomorrow starts getting a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I still think even if Biden wins, we're in for two months of a lot of fuckery, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I hope he does win, because otherwise we're in for four years of a lot of fuckery. Yeah. All right, so we've got a, a few hours left before actual results, except for what's it called? Dixon Notch, Nixon Dutch? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> five, zero, so. Yeah, yes, that was exciting. But yeah. uh, what else are you going to do to keep yourself from being too stressed out for the next few hours? Well, so I think I'll take I'll bother my children about the <laughs> which they enjoy. I have, I'm going to write a piece today, and then. I'm going to go on the Bulwark live stream a little later and I'll go on uh, doing something else. And then, you know, and hopefully I'll get some sleep so I can do some stuff tomorrow. And, you know, it's, it, this is, we have done everything we can do, you know, and we just have to hope that the American people make, I mean, it's so insane, the idea of like, <laughs> You know, and Trump has completely given up on the coronavirus task force. Yeah. So I do hope for, you know, the American people's sake that um, we do get some other uh, federal guidance here because stakes are high. Yeah. How are things looking in New York? I know they got a lot better after being really terrible. And it looks like maybe things are going the other direction again. 
I mean, I think it's inevitable that we'll have more, but uh, for now it's been okay. But yeah, I mean, I think you're ter- it's terrible. Everyone is terrified and there's no, there's no federal guidance. So what you, you know, there's no, the choices are all bad. So I think it's, it's really hard and it's scary. And that vaccine is going to be really tough to get out to people. And it really needs to be done in a way that is like careful because it needs to be, I mean, if it's this Pfizer vaccine, it needs to be stored at these very cold temperatures. So the fact that Trump has no plan for this vaccine and is like the army is going to do it is really, really, really bad. (laughs) and problematic <laughs> and like we're gonna have a vaccine and nobody's gonna be able to get it because trump world isn't gonna have ordered the needles i mean that's where we're looking down the barrel of and that's why this is so dumb and people because there's like a lot to be done with coronavirus and you know besides the testing and tracing which this government has completely given up on there's if, you know if you believe that a vaccine is going to save america which a lot of people do uh, you have to have the stuff to be able to give it. And right now we don't have that. And Jared is not working the working away at it. So uh, that's really scary to me. Uh, I thought Trump told me that starting tomorrow, there will be no more COVID. It's just going to disappear. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just been so much stupid in four years. It's really something. Yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. All right. Well, is there anything else that we should make sure that we talk about today? Uh, I'm going to remind people that Two Broads Talking Politics and Muller She Wrote and Electorate are doing a live show tonight. uh, So people can check that out. Uh, You're going to be writing some pieces. Uh, Where should people look for your stuff tomorrow? Um, I'm at The Daily Beast and I'm also at Vogue. All right. Excellent. And of course, your Twitter feed, I'm sure will be fun (laughs) for the next uh, however many hours we are all up (laughs) waiting anxiously. All right. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Molly, thanks so much. It was fun. And uh, we'll see you on the flip side. Thank you. Thank you.